Check one, check two. Not good. They reset after every quarter, too. I think they reset each quarter, though, right?
Check one, check two. You got him, Scotty.
Each week, the Thumbs Up guys are proud to highlight a scholar athlete from each participating school the students selected will have an opportunity to win a $2,500 scholarship at the end of the season. Tonight's scholar athletes are our first from Oceanside. It's the superstar senior point guard, Travis Stickney. If you don't know about the point guard, he's an absolute beast in the classroom as well. A 4-3 GPA for Mr. Stickney. He's taking his talents to Hampton Sydney College next season to pursue that basketball dream, but also a really high academic school. Travis, he was an all-region junior selection last year, but also was voted a captain on this season's team. In the classroom, he was elected as a National Honor Society member, volunteers at several basketball camps in the Mount Plays an area, and helped build a baseball field for Wynwood Farms Boys Home. Congratulations, Travis Stickney. For Bishop England, it's Ms. Julia Penton. Ladies and gentlemen, this might be our Scholar Athlete of the Week high. That's a 5-3-1 GPA for Julia Penton. That's unbelievable work. Julia, she was a member of last season's lower state championship team and has now been on this varsity team for two years. In the community, she volunteers at our Low Country Food Bank since 2019 and even helped donate blankets and other necessity items to MUSC for premature babies as well. Congratulations, Julia and Travis, this week's Scholar Athletes of the Week. Adam is the player to watch. Do you want to jump in and talk about when we're going to go? But he might like it. He got a part. <laughs> I, think, I don't think he'd be very happy if I did. <laughs> it would be a fun surprise. That's true. Check one, check two, check one, check two. I think that was a pretty sizable upset, was it not? Uh, I think they won the region title, so I, I guess. With that, well, I think they got to win one more, but they now hold the tiebreaker, I guess. All right, great news. Pitbull with someone's dad. That's huge. Yeah, lots of time. We're good. Are we are we going what five? Or are we doing a pre-recorded guy? They still have to warm up for the game. Yeah. Yeah, we got plenty. Yeah, and they're gonna do the guys senior uh, senior deal as well. Yeah.
Gabriel Riesco, Drew Sweat, Andre Hagler, Will Neville, Terrence Johnson. I think the only one I have was Vandy Irvy. Vandy Irvy, yeah. That just popped right there. I just asked him. Vandy Irvy, yeah. <laughs> that is not the ocean side coach. Yep, uh, the towel on his shoulder. Right, yep, right there. Nope, other way, other way, other way. Yeah, that's him right there. Right there, yep. I think he's still back there. Golden. You're the best, Chris. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Tim, Tim's ready to make another web gem play tonight, folks. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Legs or a hand. It don't matter. Perfect. I've got the starters, too. Um, yeah, so for BE, for BE, it's one, two, five. Yep. And 23. And then it's 11, zero, and then the, and then three, trade. Will Lou Gray Opportunity School Hoops, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. It's Will Lou Gray Opportunity School Hoops, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. The lights, they're hitting a dim. It's a special night. Yeah, it's an opportunity to win a region championship. But folks, as the lights go out, it's senior night here at the Tank. The Oceanside Collegiate Land Sharks playing host to region foe, the Bishop England battling bishops. Jack DeLongshaw alongside the court with the sports legend here in the low country, Scott Eisberg. It's a pretty incredible environment, man. I'm ready to run through a wall. Yeah, I mean, the tank is rocking tonight. It's senior night. Emotions are running high. Just had a great girls game where the Oceanside Land Sharks, the home team, won. They stopped Paul Rooney from getting win number 800 for Bishop England. So everything is just leading to emotions being high tonight. And as the team takes the court right now, it's going to be <laughs> loud and proud at Oceanside. And hopefully... We get the lights back on because they want to see us on TV as it's, they come back on right now. It's a sign. We both have faces for radio, That's clearly. Right. <laughs> I was ready for a nightlight. I needed it. Jack DeLongshaw, Scott Eisberg. We got a region championship on the line tonight, Scott. It was an unbelievable uh, women's game right before that. Kind of yeah, set the tone a little bit. 
these fans are ready to rumble as we are as well. Yeah, there's no doubt. These are the two best teams in the region. They're playing for the region title each and every year. They're doing it again this year. Bishop England has a little revenge on the minds. Oceanside beat them by 18 first time around this year. But bottom line, these guys are back neighbors. They know each other. They grew up playing together east of the Cooper River. It sets up for a great night of basketball at the tank. When you talk about two head coaches, Quentin Hollis, who actually started this program in his sixth year here at Oceanside. Brian Grady, he's a low country legend, just like yourself. Nah, Scott. I don't know about that. In his 14th season here at Bishop England, when you talk about dudes that are going to take over tonight, we've got some studs in the making. When we talk about our players to watch tonight, Travis Stickney, he just recently committed to Hampton Sydney College. And for Bishop England, Jack Vandy Irvy, he can score with the best of them. Yeah, Jack Van Dierve is the guy that Bishop England goes to when they need a point. Brian Grevy says, look, it's a very unselfish team. He's only scoring about 15 a game. He could be scoring more, but their scoring is pretty spread out across the board. But that's kind of a theme for both teams. But Van Dierve and Stickney are the guys that are they're going to go to when they really need a basket down the stretch. These are experienced players, guys who have been around the low country, done this a lot. Those are absolutely the guys, but they are not themselves without the teammates around them because both of them have pretty darn good supporting cap. With Bishop England, the precedent set. This is a team that's been a blue blood in the low country for quite some time. Oceanside making its first state championship run a season ago under that man, Quentin Hollis. And when you talk about Travis Dickey, he's one of the few guys that really produced on that team. And when he asked a lot of Stickney to come back, Quentin Hollis, a College of Charleston graduate, He's asked a lot of his point guard, and he's delivered it week in and week out. Yeah, I mean, Quentin Hollis is a point guard's coach. That's what he does because he played the position so well at such a high level for Tom Harrion at the College of Charleston. Did a nice job there, has worked his way up the coaching ranks, and now they're the team to beat. They're the team with the target on their back. They're the team that went to Aiken last year. They're the team that everybody wants to beat. It's, it's the popular thing to want to beat Oceanside, and Quentin Hollis is a big reason for that he is an up-and-coming coach in our state he's got great shoe game always has great <laughs> shoe game big air jordan type guy uh but quentin hollis really a well-respected coach and they're showing the shoes yeah, he's always got good shoes and a towel on his shoulder that is the signature for quentin hollis we live in a shoe world when you're talking about a dude with that kind of swag yeah well that record it kind of reflects it Oceanside comes in tonight, 16-6, and 6-0 in region play. And frankly, they've dominated dudes. In that last matchup, it was a 77-59 victory over Bishop England. That's the closest game they played in region. Yeah, some of these games that I've heard the score of, I believe they were beating Academic Magnet 55-1 at the half. I mean, there's some very, very lopsided scores. And that's going to change because they're moving up in the classifications. But right now... They're not up. They're still <laughs> yeah. down here. So they're looking to dominate. Look, they did it in football. They won a state championship. And, uh, you know, the thing about this school is it's so athletic-centered. It's so athletic-based that their expectation is championship or bust. Well, when you talk about athletic-based, that's maybe the reason that they're advancing that 3A level. Hey, talk about a team that they won a baseball state championship. Yep. They won a football state championship this fall with a couple dudes on the hardwood tonight that were on the gridiron. They got studs in the making. This charter, in just its infancy, really have really taken a standard of excellence almost immediately. Yeah, I mean, it's what they do. It's kind of what they specialize in. The kids are able to do some of their schooling online, some of their schooling in person. Gives them a ton of time. I mean, it said, you know, we, I think everything was said when we talked to Quentin Hollis this week, and we said, hey, when are you free to talk? And he said, you know, we're with the team <laughs> yeah. from, you know, whatever, 9 to noon. And then we're good to go. I'm good to talk to you whenever. So the coaches have time to coach. They have time to pour over film. They have time to really mold a team the way they want to do it. Now, Bishop England, very rigorous academic school as well. Also a very good school led by that man right there, Brian Grevy, former South Carolina Gamecocks basketball player, brother of Kentucky gay, a great Kevin Grevy. Uh, he now has all the time in the world to dedicate to basketball. He retired from his law practice after 30 years of practicing law and said, you know what, this is my passion. This is my dream. I love doing this. I love these kids. So Brian Grevy, I mean, he eats, sleeps, and breathes basketball so he is a perfect guy to lead this program at Bishop England and he has done it for quite a while now. 
16 and 7 coming in tonight, 5 and 1 in region play. You know, talk about a dude that loves the game. He had the opportunity to coach his son, BJ Greedy, one of Bishop England's greats. They've had studs throughout this uh, lineup. It, one of those guys that's actually sitting on his bench, yeah. a former Notre Dame alumni, Leo Albano. I got it. It really took care of the paint. And when we talked with them going into this matchup, it felt like that was the main focal point and emphasis. Got to take care of the rim, play above it, yep. find a way to protect it. Yeah, there's no question about it. That's what you got to do. And they're not a big team, but they've got some taller guys. They really do. Uh, Aiden Alexander is a guy that could really be a, a back if a, a backup if you will to Vanderby. Uh, he's the kind of guy who can put in some points, scores about 12 a game, but he's got depth on every position. That's what Brian Greavy loves is that he can go to several different guys several different times in the game and more or less interchange him. He's not relying on one absolute stud. It's also interesting when you talk about his coaching staff. He's got guys on his staff that are true Bishop England through and through guys. Guys like Leo Albano and Daniel Eakin is an assistant coach who's the head coach of the JV. Eakin played basketball for the Citadel. He's a guy who's been around the basketball block a million times over and Grevy says he's the luckiest guy in the world with the staff that he has. That's the biggest thing for him is he gets so much help from the guys on his staff. And look who just walked in the gym. Georgia offensive lineman Monroe Freeling just walked into the gym. Well, I thought you were talking about B.J. Greeny, yeah, son of yeah, Brian Well, there's Greeny. Brian Greeny, but I was talking about Monroe Freeling well, just walking in the gym. We've got the Freeling brothers. Tristan leads the way. He was an Oceanside graduate. Actually, their first ever collegiate basketball signee, Tristan, took his talents and played at Queens College. Yep. Now a highlighter for the women's basketball team in Columbia. Yep, and there's Monroe Freeling, who's a, a Georgia offensive <laughs> lineman. A, a large, large human being here at uh, Oceanside Collegiate. So it's it's fun to see all the guys that walk in He's here. He's tough to miss. I mean, he was a five-star left tackle. He just started his first season at Georgia. They're here to support little brother Grayson, who's a member of the Oceanside team. But now that we broke down the teams, I'm curious from your perspective. This is for a region championship, Scotty. I want to go into our keys to the game brought to you by Cruz Chevrolet. Cruz Chevy on Rivers, just north of Northwoods Mall. You've got a friend that Cruz Chevy. How are these two teams going to be able to walk away with a W tonight? Yeah, Oceanside, you got to take care of the ball because Bishop England is scrappy. They're going to go for steals. They're going to try to just get you a little off balance. And also, yeah, use this home court protection. Protect your home court. Use the advantage of a home court. That's the big thing here is this is a great home court advantage. It's not a big gym. It's, it's almost like the, the buck dome of high school gyms, if you will. <laughs> but, you know, what is it only about? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten rows. Rows on each side, I think, by my, you know. Quick math. Yeah, quick I math. Like it. Yeah, times that by what, 50 across? We're talking what, 500 people in the gym, whatever it may be. That could be completely wrong math. I have no idea. I loved it. Fire marshals don't call. <laughs> uh, that was very non scientific. But no, you, you use the advantage that you get here. The lights go off, the blues start spinning, everything is rocking and rolling in the tank. And so you got to use that to your advantage. Now, if you're Bishop England, You've got to go in there and be unafraid. You can't come in here and, and get nervous by all the people that are here rooting for Oceanside and how loud it is and the advantage that they have. You just kind of got to roll with it. Well, let the late Vin Scully take Bishop England home. Don't let the pressure exceed the pleasure. Brian Greavy's group, in order to win a region championship, they're going to have to play to the standard of what he's helped set. It'll be really interesting tonight when you dive into it with so many fans here in the building for Bishop England. A guy that I want to keep an eye on tonight, Andrew Puckhaber. He's got an 11 foot, four inch max vert. That's what he's touching. I mean, this dude can jump out of the gym. So you're saying he could dunk the ball. That guy's going to be able to put his elbow in the rim tonight. <laughs> the question is, does that verticality, that athleticism, how does it play against the physicality of a very I don't want to say inexperienced because at this point in the season, no one really is, but a youthful front court for Oceanside. Yeah, and it's it's interesting because Oceanside, if you look at them, they're a little bigger. It looks like they've been in the weight room a little bit longer than Bishop England has. They got some guys who are just athletes on the Oceanside Land Sharks, and they also have some interesting talent on this team. Terrence Johnson, he's a transfer from Stahl. They're saying as he grows, he could become one of the top players in the low country. 
There's superstars on both sidelines. Who will prevail tonight? Don't go anywhere. Starting lineups on the other side of this break. It's Oceanside. It's Bishop England when we come back. No, ladies and gentlemen, it is Will Lou Gray Opportunity School Hoops driven by Cruz Chevrolet. But it isn't the 98 Bulls, it's the Shark Tank. Where else would you rather be on a Friday night when with Scott Eisberg and myself? Yeah, it's a pretty nice place to be. No Dennis Rodman, no Michael Jordan, but you know what? It is senior night, though. It is We've senior night. We've got Caden Freeman, Carson Jones, Trey Brown, Jake Thomas, and Travis Stickney. We say happy senior night. To Mr. Travis Stickney, Caden Freeman, trade bound an incredible season, uh, career here at Oceanside, looking to cap it off with another state championship run. And for Bishop England, this is how they're looking to pull off the big time upset. Andrew Pride, Ellis Rollins, whose big brother was a stud here at Bishop England. Happy Father's Day, Baylor. Aiden Alexander, whose older brother plays for Citadel. Yep. Jack Vanderveen, and Andrew Puckhaber. And I know everyone at home is tired of hearing us talk. We can finally just about underway. watch basketball. That's the key <laughs> right now. It's enough of us pontificating and prognosticating. Now we got tip off and we are rocking and rolling. Travis Stickney is the guy. The ball is going to be in his hands plenty. And he's the guy that Quinton Hollis trusts with the ball for sure. You can see on that opening tip, Bandy Irvy, the stud defender on his end, looks to. A lockdown defense is a fist 50-50 ball will remain an ocean side possession. Oh, how about a second referral? It's heading the other way. Our officiating crew's been with us since week one with a quick adjustment. A shot clock adjustment. And Van Yergi will inbound under his own basket. It was Jake Thomas who took that first shot, and they regard him as one of the top sophomores in the state. He's a guy that's only going to grow. He's only 46, plays for the Upward Stars. So he's a guy you got to keep your eye on down low. I like the matchups down low. Those should be interesting to watch. Ellis Rollins with a three just right off the back iron. But how about the offensive rebound from Puck Haber? I'm telling you, this kid can jump out the gym. That's the key. If you can get up there above the rim and grab some rebounds, I mean... In a tight ball game, you, you really need somebody who can rebound and then take their game outside as well. He was looking for the foul there, didn't get it. Danny Irvy and Jake Thomas battling underneath the position. Danny Irvy, as maybe you guys can hear at home, the BE faithful, a little upset. Did look like Thomas got in the way with a little bit of a hold. No DPI called. Vandy Irvy getting recruited 
not the bigger schools, but some smaller schools. Really smart kid, great student. Merchant Marine Academy, interested in him. Carson Jones, a little Mr. Sparky corner, pocket three. Our first points of the game. Carson Jones is a guy, Brian Greedy said, it was him in that first matchup. He hit five threes. Yeah. The guy he didn't necessarily game plan for, but Quentin Hollis says, I'd be one of the best three-point shooters in the area. Yeah, he's a streaky shooter, but when he gets hot, he gets hot. And Hollis trying to get him some college offers, trying to get him some interest because he wants to play at the next level. It's Stickney misses the layup, which he doesn't often do, and then Thomas mixes the putback. In transition, that's where Oceanside has really been at their best. They've got athletes that can really go, and as Stickney corrals his first defensive rebound of the ball game. His ability to hang up in here is what makes him such a unique athlete. He finds Freeman in the corner, unable to connect. But truly, it, as just a point guard, he's a pass first dude, but his explosiveness athletically is insane. Yeah, that's the key is he can get to the rim, and but he can take his game outside as well. And when you have a two a player that can do like a two-headed monster like that, tremendously uh, big for a coach to rely on them. But both of these coaches are just so happy with their teams. That's the one thing that really stuck out to me is like, you know, sometimes we'll have coaches who kind of complain, or oh, this is not working, or I can't get this to work. Both of these coaches love these teams. They love coaching these teams. First points of the night for Bishop England go to Aiden Alexander. We mentioned Alexander's big brother plays at the Citadel Cole Alexander. Aiden has turned into quite the player himself. He's been a really good scorer, averaging about 12 points a night. Yeah, and Brian Greeby said he really wants to play college basketball, and he knows what that is about. You know, seeing his brother and what he's going through under Ed Conroy at the Citadel. It's amazing, we have two guys from east of the Cooper River that are sitting at the end of uh, Ed Conroy's bench between him and Rowan Ireland. So, you know, a kid whose brother plays at that next level, he knows what it takes and what you have to put into it to get something out of it. He really wants that opportunity, and Brian Greeby says he's absolutely gonna work all he can to get him that opportunity. This is that three in the pocket of Bandy Hergie. Look at him sky up for the offensive board. He's short on the second attempt. But it's going to be that type of offensive rebounding effort if they're going to look to pull off the upset tonight. Yeah, and I think there's some nerves here. It's a good crowd. It's on TV. So a couple of shots are going to be missed early, and that's to be expected. It happens, and then the game really starts to even out. They kind of forget that the lights are on them. They forget everything, and they get into the zone, and that's when the game really starts to take form, if you will. I was going to say, these two teams can really light up. It almost feels like a little bit of an exhale after that women's game early. Such an unbelievable finish. Yeah, great, great finish there. Bishop England down three, did not get a shot off to tie it. They had the ball with seven seconds left, drew up a play, and just never got a shot off. Good defense by Oceanside, you know, but if you're BE, you, you got to just get something off. Without question, is it looks like a similar possession that Bishop England won't get a shot off. I believe it's going to be on a back screen, trying to see who they got it on. There's a, as much question marks rattle around in Quentin Hollis's head as maybe myself. Jake it Thomas, like it looks, like, screen, yeah. looks like Jake Thomas got the foul. Yep. So it was gonna be on an off ball screen. Jake Thomas tried to hedge it maybe a little bit too hard. He's getting, he'll hit, he'll get hit. First foul of the game. They're gonna try to get it in the hands here of uh, Mr. Pride because he's the guy who's a natural point guard. That's the thing about him. Like You love having the ball in the hands of Andrew Pride because he is just that natural distributor and he's super calm with the ball in his hand. When they can set it up with him, Ryan Greeby likes that. He's got his hands full of guarding Stickney tonight, but he's done a great job so far. Slowing the game down. And Bishop England's got a couple really nice looks. Just haven't been able to connect as Travis Stickney. That's all he's done in his ocean side career. Up the three from the top of the key. He's just a basketball player, and uh, he'll be fun to watch at that next level because he's just always in the gym. He's a gym rat type guy, plays in the off season. Good basketball family. They they really love the game, so it'll be interesting to see where he ends up. Another nice rebound there from Puck Haber, who's very agile as well. That's three rebounds for him already. I think four offensive rebounds already tonight for Bishop England. The name of the game have to capitalize. And those second chance points. Yeah, just ask Pat Kelsey last night. I mean, that he, he, why number one reason why the College of Charleston lost to Wilmington last Ooh. night, they weren't getting offensive rebounds. 
Man, what a beautiful possession for Bishop England. They must have heard us over at the scores table. Two of the prettier West Shore home points in the bank that we're gonna see maybe all night. Great ball movement. Good finish from Aiden Alexander. Maybe a better find from Ellis Rollins. Rollins on the other end doing a great job boxing out the much larger Jake Thomas. That ball will fall out of bounds and it'll take us to our first media timeout. Two threes for Oceanside. They've got them up 6-4. How about the sweet look? Ellis Rollins looking like big brother Baylor. BE trails by two when we come back. Okay, they can't stop when they can't hold. Can't rock when they can't go. Can't top and just can't block because I know the things they can't know. But listen, we're in my position. It's Will Lou Gray, Opportunity School Hoops, driven by Cruz, Chevrolet, as Quint Hollis looks on a bit of an offensive stalemate. Both squads struggling to get it going here on senior night. He goes to a bit of a hockey line change as he checks in Max Mormon for the first time, as well as Tyreek Dawson. And he says the thing about Mormon is he can really interchange him with Thomas. That's the thing about them, very similar body types, very similar type games that they have. So if they're interchangeable, that's great. You keep guys fresh and, you know, we see that a lot. We saw obviously most pronounced with Somerville earlier in the year where it was literally hockey line changes every two minutes. But Quinton Hollis definitely subscribes to that theory of let's kind of shift them in, shift them out and let two lines play and rest as well. So Bishop England goes to that 2-3 coming out of the timeout, pays dividends. Oceanside moved the ball well right now, but open shots not seeming to fall. Is Not sure if we got a foul underneath the basket. Still waiting an announcement. No one really went to the scorer's table. Regardless, Bishop England's just happy to have the rock. Andrew Pride going across two high screens, and that ball's going to go off the fingertips of Rollins. Landshark ball. You can see Pride works out plenty, big muscles. He could able it, it enables him to get banged around a little bit and not be uh, too soft. He's not a tall guy. He's going to go into the big trees, but he's able to handle himself because of the strength that he works and earns. Well, Bishop England doing a fantastic job of boxing out right now. The gritty nature of Ellis Rollins has now caused back-to-back -back fouls on both ends. That's going to be an over the back on Abe Davenroy. He's a really talented shooter. His brother Calvin played in this system after transferring over from Wando. A stud scorer. We're going to say Davenroy is named quite a bit tonight. It appears that was his second foul. It was him on the possession before as well. Quentin Hollis says he loves that he has so many siblings that work their way through the Oceanside program. It, it, you know, guys follow their brothers, they know what's expected of them, and he said it's just so satisfying. It also makes him feel a little bit old when you've constantly <laughs> got siblings, younger siblings coming through. Kids who were hanging out here when they were eight, nine years old are now 15, 16 years old and playing for you. But that just shows that, look, the program is working and the pipeline is working and that's what you want. Now, Bishop England naturally is gonna have that. I mean, generation upon generation upon generation of family 
go to Bishop England, so that's to be expected. But on Oceanside, this is a very young school, a very young program, so to now have the second and third you know, levels of families coming through, it's kind of a cool experience and a first time thing for them. They picked up where they left off as a great backdoor cut. Great look from Drew Swint. And there's Max Mormon, his first two points of the night to push the lead back to four. Max Mormon is a junior, 6'5. He really fits in nicely, and you can't move him out of the block. He just brings that toughness, that height. And like we saw right there, a nice little soft touch around the rim, which is certainly important to grab a couple of points for them. And if he could fill in for Thomas, you know, Oceanside feels pretty good about themselves at the two-way level with those guys on the inside. Interesting, the Van Dierve kind of slipped there. It's a different kind of gym floor. It's not straight wood. Harry Dawson, mid-range jumper, good. But to your point, that was something that Quentin Allison mentioned to us. He's like, hey, we're still in our infancy. They're getting some banners hanged up. He said they used to call it the barn, but they're still working on the floor. But you're right, it can for opposing ball clubs. Take some time to get your feet in right. It's, you know, it looks like a gym floor, like a normal wood one that you would see when you watch it on TV. But, it, I mean, I'm just, you know, my feet are on it right now. And it is kind of a slippery surface. It's a... I don't know, an all-weather type surface, and it probably is not hurt by water or anything like that as the quarter ends before that basket goes Andrew down. Pride was looking for a deep three. The putback from Puckhaber won't go. And an ocean side. A little bit of a defensive standout quarter, one we were not expecting. But Oceanside just wants a dub. They're three quarters away from a region championship. They lead 10-4 at the end of one. We welcome you back into the Shark Tank. Tonight's broadcast brought to you by Will Lou Gray, Opportunity School Hoops, and always driven by Cruz Chevrolet, Jack the Longshot, courtside with Scott Eisberg, Quentin Hollis looking on. It was 77-59 in their first matchup. A 10-4 first quarter was not in our playbook. No, I didn't think so at all, but you know what? We were talking about it. The nerves were a little high. I was at that first game, and it was a very offensive you know, shootout, if you will. It's just not surprising to me anymore with these TV games. They kind of start off a bit slow and then keep going. But that's a big time play by Max Mormon right there. Hoop, the foul. He's a tough dude. He's a big kid, man. He doesn't look like a high school junior, as you see the three from Tyreek Dawson rim out. And he's just a low. Like you mentioned, Coach Howells told us earlier in the week, like his ability to position himself, understanding his strength. Is that free throw brought to you by Rapid Repairs will rattle in and out. And Bishop England ball. He's just, he's got great court awareness. Yeah, you know, he, he, it's funny. Looks-wise, 
end game wise, he reminds me a little bit of Monroe Freeling when he played basketball <laughs> here. He's kind of got that nice little touch around the basket, smiley kid, uh, but he's just big. You're not going to move him around on the inside. Matched up with Alexander as he wisely pulls out. We saw Oceanside at the end of the quarter go to a 32. They're back in that man. That'll be a storyline as we look into is Quentin Hollis. Very famous for just throwing different personnel looks throughout a night, making teams really uncomfortable. Bishop England's opting for a little four out, one in. Depending on personnel, Brian Greedy's bunch, they run that, that Princeton offense. They've run a lot of four out, one in, depending on what their front court looked like in years past. They've had some big guys down low. They've switched up year in and year out. It's a really tough look. It's Puck Haber rattling it out. Notion side's got a five on four. Checking in for the first time tonight is Terrence Johnson, that corner three. And the stall transfer won't connect, but that kid's a special athlete. That's for sure gonna give us some human highlight reel stuff by the end of tonight. Yeah, only a sophomore in Hollis says, man, he's gonna start raking in offers as he grows in the program and grows in what they're doing and just grows because when you look like that as a sophomore, you're only getting bigger, faster, stronger. So we'll see how he progresses, but a nice play right there for the Oceanside Land Sharks. Tyrick Dawson, and they're starting to kind of show their might a little bit here. Brian Grevy not calling the timeout, but they're down 10. Bishop England only with two buckets so far in the first 10 minutes of this game. You got to get things going if you're the battling bees. Alexander, how about the up and under? Great move, exactly what you're looking for. No question. It's funny, we were talking about Quentin Hollis and how he kind of changes up the defense a little bit and what he does. He says so much of that has to do with his assistant coach, Kevin McNamara. He said he is a X's and O's genius. He is the kind of guy who will sit all day every day and watch game film if you let him because he can break it down. Hollis says, I gotta be at the game to see things with my own two eyes. McNamara, he can just turn on the film and find little holes in other teams and that's what allows Oceanside to take advantage of those holes. It's a beautiful blend is Quentin Hollis. He played at the College of Charleston. He's a true player's coach. And there's that look. Nice assist from Gabriel Riesco. And on the other end, how about that up and under? He got Mormon up in the air. A little jack in the box move. Oceanside will check back in. Travis Stickney and Jake Thomas. Bishop England checking back in. Andrew Pride. And for the first time tonight, Noah Williams, a senior guard. Pride, how about the little float piece? Ooh, the hesitation, so sweet. His first two of the night. Really pretty for Pride, no fear at all, going down into the land of the trees. And, you know, what is he, probably 5'6", five, 5'7", five, had no fear going down there and scoring that basket, so a nice play for him. And now we've got a ball game. We got a six point game, five minutes left in the second quarter. Brian Grevy seems to be much more pleased with how his team has come out and scored a couple of baskets here in the second quarter. And that's all we ask for is just a good basketball game. And hopefully we're gonna get that and continue to get that tonight. But these two teams are, you know, they know each other well. There's not a feeling out process. They've seen each other already this year. They already played a full game. So we'll just kind of see how it progresses. Stickney is the one that I, I, you know, I wonder if you're gonna see him really start to catch fire a little bit because he has that ability to do that. You talk about knowing each other really well. Maybe that's Terrence Johnson understanding that Andrew Puckhaber set a really nice on-ball screen there. He's got to honor it because Puckhaber does have the ability to stretch it and knock down that three, kind of stuck in no man's land. But to your point, Travis Stickney, they lost a lot from last season's state oh, championship gosh, yeah. run. Makai Rivers was a stud guard in that backcourt with Stickney. Uh, Malachi. Malachi. Yeah, yeah, I mean, both guys that went on to play collegiately. Right. But Stickney understood that we have enough to come back to get back to where we were. Yeah, no question. Now, Makai Rivers down at uh, USC Salkahatchee, and Malachi Stevens is down at Polk State in Florida. So they're both playing next level junior college basketball, and you know, both of them are guys that have Division I talent, so would not be surprised to see them play at that next level. As Jake Thomas shows he's uh, a pretty big force to be reckoned <laughs> with down low. You mentioned Division I uh, prospects. Hey, Jake Thomas at 6'6", just a sophomore. He's an underclassman. He goes, hey, Maybe consider me as one of those Division One dudes as well. He plays for the Upward Stars, one of the best travel AAU teams in the state of South Carolina. Pride is able to slash in. He finds Puck Haber, who's unable to miss. Knock down a three, his third miss from downtown so far. 
Puck Haber's the kind of guy at the next level, he's not going to be a big man. Here he is, but at that next level, he's going to have to be kind of a wing type player. Thomas just showing his might down low again, really tough. Between him and Mormon, whoever's in the game, that inside presence has been the difference so far. Leads back to 10, the largest of the night is Vandy Irvy looking to get involved. Great defense from Jake Thomas as he walls up. Land Sharks on a five on four. Riesco, nice move, finds the big fella. He's looking for six in a row and he'll have to do so at the charity strike. Almost feel like Vandy Irvy a little bit is just pressing. He knows that they rely on him for scoring. He trying to get to the basket and get things done. No defense to stop the big bull. The young sophomore at 6'6". He's got six unanswered. Leads to 10. An 18-8 lead for the Oceanside Land Sharks, the reigning region champs, looking to go back to back, 16 and 6 and 6 and 0 in region play. And they've been able to do it on the big back. The man at the line, Jake Thomas, sitting at six foot six. Man, he looks like a Division One defensive end. But man, has he been talented on the hardwood this season as he knocks down the first of the rapid repair, repair free throws. Amazing to think Brian Grevy's brother's name is hanging in the rafters at Rupp Arena. The, the Grevy name, quite well known in the Midwest. He's a guy who, from the Cincinnati area, and got hurt his senior year. And some of the offers that he was getting, he had Notre Dame, some, some big time looks. Uh, he ended up, Frank McGuire at South Carolina is the one who stuck with him. And so he decided to come to South Carolina, and he said it was the best decision he could have made. You know, played at South Carolina for three years and then his fourth year got hurt again. And Frank McGuire said, I want you to be a, a manager on this team, a student coach manager. I don't want you, you know, carrying water bottles. I want you in there writing up game plans with us. And Grevy said that was the most valuable year of his life, learning all of that stuff. And now, you know, he's been coaching for a long, long time in encyclopedic knowledge of the game. And he credits so much of it to Frank McGuire at South Carolina. Incredible family. That love for South Carolina continues as his son, BJ. Played a little golf at South Carolina on the club team. He's in the building tonight as the Bishop's looking to pull off the upset. And that's going to be a three from Aiden Alexander. He's, He's got nine, much needed. He has picked up all of the scoring slack for Bishop England, all but two of their points scored by Aiden Alexander, and Grevy says it. He's, a, he's an electric scorer, and so to have him as a second option to Van Dierby is a big deal. A great look underneath as Ellis Rollins. Looked like he swiped it clean, but a great head fake from Gabriel Riesco. That'll send him to the line. Another look at it right there. The selflessness of Andy Irvy, too. You know that he's wanting to get in this game, but his ability yep. to facilitate. Hey, man, we'll take three anyway, anyway, anyway anyhow. 
Gabriel Riesco's older brother played for Oceanside. He's another guy who's been around the program since he was a little kid. He's a backup point guard, but he likes to push the ball. He's a big assist guy. Just a solid point guard that Quentin Hollis likes to have on the team. He's just a junior. Can't you see him filling into the shoes of Travis Stinkley who will leave next season? Just, I mean, he's a dude that Quentin Hollis, I, he didn't need to fill it up to impact the game, but he's a statue stuff with so many different varieties. The thing I like is both of these teams are so concentrated on defense. They really do care about defense. They play hard. That shows a lot of respect for their coach. They're not out there just trying to pad the stats with scoring. You know, these are defensive-minded teams, and they play super hard basketball. Pass first point guard on the run. Tries to close the issue, looking for Thomas. That's Alexander. How about the crossover? These are going to go coast to coast. Can't get it to fall. Might have gotten away with a little bit of a travel there, so maybe it was Karma coming back and missed the layup on that play. But the mismatch of per se is Andrew Pride. How about the pride of the bishop? Look at that, taking the charge. That's the kind of thing that will get your team rallying around you when you take a charge like that. No fear whatsoever to go stick straight like a tree right down there against the biggest guy on their team. The most selfless play in basketball. He takes a huge shot from a dude who's easily got 100 pounds on him. Yeah, yeah. And maybe most importantly, that's Jake Thomas' second personal in the first half. Again, that's why Mormon's such a big guy to have on your team because you can slide into that position and really not lose anything. You've got the size still and you've got the touch around the basket. But yeah, if you're Thomas, he's been arguably their best player tonight. You, you want him on the court with two fouls. It's uh, you know not worth it to keep him out there right now. With an 11 point lead, 2.25 to go in the first half. Putting Hollis a lot to send his big fellow to the bench as Ellis Rollins will slow the game down a bit. Riesco will show a little full court action. Nation Bingham desperately looking to cut it back to second digits before the end of the half. The kick to Rollins. Rollins finds Alexander. And again, wisely pulls it. Danny Irby still looking. For his first points of the night, he's got a couple of assists. And Oceanside's doubled down almost every time that he's touched the rock. It should leave somebody open. Several times it's been Alexander. Van Yerby just has to get the shot to start going. He's gotten a couple of nice looks now, but here's Stickney. He hit the one early shot. How about the rebound? He finds a slash and Stickney, but how about the no look? Man, that's the danger of Travis Stickney. Yep. He's so quick that the no look. I don't want to call it Larry Bird S, but I will. How about the five? Whoop. That's a great look right there. Noah Williams did thought he had all ball defensively for Bishop England. He immediately put his hands up and say, no, 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 no. That's all ball, but refs don't see it that way. And the Oceanside Land Sharks are at the line. Carson Jones rattling and out. Some screams from maybe the backcourt of Bishop England. Hey, balled up and lie. Carson Jones, your home needs repairs. Call Rapid Repairs. That first free throw unable to go. Still an 11-point lead for the Landsharks. Quentin Hollis says he has no problem whatsoever saying Carson Jones is one of the top three shooters in all of Charleston. That's a lot to say when you've got Stickney on your team, and there's some pretty good shooters we've seen so far this year, but Hollis says he has no qualms whatsoever in saying one of the top three shooters in the low country. The big body, 6'4", 165 pounds. He's a wiry dude that plays some stretch forward, but can also play shooting guard as well. Is Alexander, he's been the focal point this half. Unable to get it to go, but a nice second touch from Ant Vandy Irby. Nellis Rollins wants to set up an offense here. Going to run it through himself. And Rollins is a, is a point guard, but he's also a really good shooter. So he's a guy you got to watch on the outside. Here's that 3-2 that Oceanside showed at the end of the first quarter. They're back in it. Rollins with a great head fake on Vandy Irby in the corner. Oceanside will double down. He's in trouble. Wisely throws it off the thigh of Carson Jones. To your point, too, Alex Rollins. Stud center fielder as well. Coach Darnell. On there the you go. As well. He's a stud athlete. Bishop England has had so much success on the baseball diamond under Darnell. I mean, heck, Leo Albano played baseball, too. He played football, basketball, baseball. You know, if, if you were to say, you know, who are the top 10 athletes you've ever covered in high school, Leo Albano easily fits into that. 
Bishop. Got to have on the staff to coach up the next wave of Bishops. And I wouldn't be shocked if he's their next head football coach. I don't know how badly he wants it, but they're looking for a football coach, and if you want to stay in the family, he's the kind of guy that's going to give you quite a bit of a future. In the 4 level, they'll have their hands full, just like Bishop England has tonight on the defensive end. That was Tyree Dawson, who's up to six. He was able to get a quick look at the rims. Quinn Hollis is a little upset with the call as Noah Williams will head to the line. I feel like Noah Williams got that one back for the foul. He didn't think he committed on the other end of the floor against Oceanside, but kind of bricked the first free throw right there. 25-11, down 14. Yeah, Quinn Hollis is fighting for every call like it's the last two minutes of the game. A little bit of a chuckle, so... Maybe there's a broadcaster jinx and a bit of variety. Yeah. <laughs> no rooms. We'll head back to the line looking to cut the deficit for 13, and he will not. Tyree Dawson with another rebound and having one heck of a first half is the junior guard. He's got four rebounds to go along with those six points as well. He's been quite the bright spot. And the clock dwindles. Ellis Rollins will fight for a rebound. And with just 1.8 to go, Oceanside will get another look. Scotty, hold on to your chair. They've got an inbounds alley you play. I'm not sure if we're going to see it, but it is electrifying. No, we're not going to see it, but that will look like a travel. They find Carson Jones in the corner for a little set three. It won't go, but boy, was it all land sharks. 25 11. Quinton Hall has got to be ecstatic. A dominating first half defensively, especially. They've done it all season long. They're two quarters away from back to back region champs. Don't go anywhere. Doctors in plan halftime report right after this break. In my face, I'm not looking for sympathy or empathy in my frenzy. It's me against that world, because the world seems to be against me. I'm rolling. rolling. And they ain't going to roll over me because I'm going. Welcome to the Doctors Implants Halftime Report. Empowering people through full mouth dental implants. Each week, the Thumbs Up guys are proud to highlight a scholar athlete from each participating school the students selected will have an opportunity to win a $2,500 scholarship at the end of the season. Tonight's scholar athletes are our first from Ocean side. It's the superstar senior point guard, Travis Stickney. If you don't know about the point guard, He's an absolute beast in the classroom as well. A 4-3 GPA for Mr. Stickney. He's taking his talents to Hampton Sydney College next season to pursue that basketball dream, but also a really high academic school. Travis, he was an all-region junior selection last year, but also was voted a captain on this season's team. In the classroom, he was elected as a National Honor Society member, volunteers at several basketball camps in the Mount Play as an area, and helped build a baseball field for Wynwood Farms Boys Home. Congratulations, Travis Stickney. For Bishop England, it's Miss Julia Penton. Ladies and gentlemen, this might be our Scholar Athlete of the Week high. That's a 5-3-1 GPA for Julia Penton. That's unbelievable work. Julia, she was a member of last season's Lower State Championship team and has now been on this varsity team for two years. 
In the community, she volunteers at our Low Country Food Bank since 2019 and even helped donate blankets and other necessity items to MUSC for premature babies as well. Congratulations, Julie and Travis, this week's Scholar Athletes of the Week. Hello again, another week, another scholar athlete, and these guys presented each and every week. Two of the four thumbs up guys, Brandon and Jeff. Let's talk about scholar athletes. Let's talk about community for your law firm. How important is it to be involved with the community, Jeff? It's always the top of our mind. The thing we want to do more than anything is give back. And we every, every year at the beginning of the year, we set goals on how much we can give back, uh, either to communities, to schools, whatever we can do. What is new at the law firm, Raymond? Yeah, so we made a big goal, big pledge this year that we want to impact uh, 10,000 uh, local Charlestonians uh, positively in the community. So whether that be uh, food drives, uh, high school hoops, uh, giving back in all the different ways that we can. So we put together a plan for the year to make sure that we hit that goal. Thumbs up for that. The thumbs up guys, two of them are here with us. Uh, Brandon Dawson and Jeff Ward from the thumbs up guys presenting sponsors of our Scholar Athlete. Welcome to the Doctors Implants Halftime Report, empowering people through full mouth dental implants. Welcome back as we shine a little bit of an academic spotlight on the Oceanside Land Sharks, joined now live by their principal, Christina Brown, third year in office, if you will. Your opportunity to brag on your school a little bit. What's going on in the hallways here at Oceanside? Well, there's so much to say. It's the second semester here, you know, start in February, strong, and our kids are just awesome. So in the halls, they're into their routines and bebopping around and having a lot of success in the classroom. How can you describe Oceanside to somebody who might not know what it is? Like, it's just such a different curriculum or different uh, type school, if you will. How do you explain it to somebody who has no idea what Oceanside is? Well, I think uh, a lot can be said with being a collegiate academy. Our really focus at our school is our college classes, a dual enrollment program that we have. So that is the, one of the main focuses that our kids are going to be full-time college students at a very early age, and they really step up to that challenge. So I think that's different than a lot of places. Um, so the safe, small, family-centered environment that we have and the model of our school provides a lot of different opportunities than the traditional uh, setting. Pretty cool lobby out there you've got. It seems like a cool lounge. You know, the kids really are not coddled here, but it's a pretty comfortable place to go to school, it looks like. Oh, we're a family. Uh, you know, relationships are really key. Our staff is passionate about their subjects and the kids here. So it has a different feel. It's kind of laid back, very positive. Um, the kids have a lot of freedom, but they have high expectations and high accountability, and it really works. They rise to the occasion. Final question for you. How much pride do you take when you see a signing day, and every time you've held one, there's been 10, 11, 12 kids sitting at this table across the gym here? Oh, it's amazing. They, As an athlete, you know, they are doing so well in the classroom on top of all the time and hard work they have on their athletics. So it's just a culminating of so many years that they dedicated to this craft. So it is a really prideful moment that they have handled uh, life, jobs, school, and athletics at a very high level. And who doesn't want to keep their passion going in the next level? So we are like their biggest cheerleaders and excited to see where they take it and that they can keep playing a sport that they love. Awesome. That's Christina Brown. She is the principal here at Oceanside Collegiate Academy. And we'll be back with more basketball after the break.
Welcome to the Doctors Implants Halftime Report, empowering people through full mouth dental implants. Our free throw sponsor here on High School Hoops, Rapid Repairs. Joining us now, Brian Miller from Rapid Repairs. First, welcome in. Why uh, High School Hoops? Why jump into this high school sports realm for you? Well, thanks, Scotty, for having me on the on the show. I uh, love high school sports. As a product of Charleston County School District, it makes me extremely happy to know that high school sports is really foundational for the kids here in the Low Country and for personal development, and also helps them build a lot of team camaraderie as they uh, grow into the community. Rapid repairs. What are you guys up to? What could folks call you for? Rapid Repairs, we're a home repair company, so we like to tell the community if your home needs repairs, call Rapid Repairs. So we really like to focus on home safety with, with all your mechanical systems, whether it's electrical, plumbing, or just general home maintenance work. Final question for you, Rapid Repairs, how long have you guys been at it and how much pride is there representing uh, that company? Yeah, great question. So this year marks 25 years uh, serving the low country. Our pride is really the, the company is our, our heart and soul. It's a uh, local company. My wife and I uh, are the owners of it. If any of you've watched our commercials, our children are growing up around the business and we like to give back to the community. We try to involve the trades here in the local community as well as in the school. Awesome. Thanks so much. That's Brian Miller from Rapid Repairs as they present our free throw shooting here on High School Hoops. We're on the other side of our doctor's implant halftime report. It's will look great. Opportunity School Hoops driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Dominant first half to say the least. 25-11, Quentin Hollis. There's some words being exchanged, understanding that the job not done yet. Bishop England applying a little bit of pressure coming out of the half, and there's the sophomore. Jake Thomas picking right up where the land Sharks left off. He's got nine. That's where his game is so different. Yeah, it is different. He knows that at the next level, unless he continues to grow tremendously, that's a nice steal by him right there as well. Oceanside coming out with plenty of intensity and stick that goes right to the hoop, and that's the exact type of start that Quinton Hollis wants. I'm surprised Brian Grevy not going to call a timeout to stop the bleeding right now. But... The interesting thing about, you know, Thomas is he doesn't know how tall he's going to be in two years. If he gets up to 6'9", then yeah, he's a big man at the next level. If he stays at this height, he's going to need to work on that outside shot at the next level. So he seems to kind of have both of them there. And now he just has to tap into both and just kind of hone the skill. But that's a pretty shot right there for a guy who's... Six foot six. You're spot on. It was a really nice assist from Drew Swit and, and Scotty you call it. There's a timeout from Brian Grevy as they look to slow things down. But when you talk about a guy like Jake Thomas, he had six and three in the first half. He's up to nine. But you're right. right. Like at the division one level, which is he's projecting to be one of the best sophomores in the state of South Carolina, playing for the upward stars. 
he'll have to develop a game. And when you look at a guy maybe like Bryce Butler down in college. Yeah, Carlson, absolutely. Who's like a bigger body, maybe played that four or five in high school. Because when you look at other bigs in the low country, none of them stack up to Jake Thomas. Even you want level, they will. To be able to develop that third element of scoring ability is really going to be what allows him to take the next step. You know, he, he reminds me a little bit of... Um, you know, I was going to say a Bailey Weissman that used to play for James Island, yep. but not Bailey Weissman was more of a natural shooter, and he wasn't as big. But he almost kind of had that inside-out game that I, you know, liked seeing. That's a heck of a putback if it had gone down. Stick me on senior night, a three rattled long, but the offensive boards are starting to stack. Here's another one for Carson Jones, his second rebound. Bishop England sitting back in that 2-3 in Oceanside, starting to pick it apart. Jones to Stickney. He'll be fouled by Puck Hart. Puck Aver, excuse me, that's Puck Aver's third. Got that foul trouble early. He's upset with himself as he broke that 90 degree plane. Stickney heads the line, but to your point, wise with a hybrid blend guard in between that one, two, and three. Yep more comfortable in the low block than maybe sometimes with ball in hand, and, and that's almost Thomas similar. And, you know, and I was actually, I was thinking, I was, I think I was thinking of, uh, what was his name? Was it uh, Gaskin? It was a Cooper. Uh, yeah, um, played next one. Uh, uh, Cohen, Cohen Gaskins, yep. was that his name? That's who I was thinking of. A bit of a taller guy who could take his game outside. I remember Gaskins transferred from Pinewood to James Island, played alongside Wiseman that last year. That's who I was thinking of. Yeah, Wiseman was more of a straight guard. Yeah. Cooper Ga uh, uh, Cohen Gaskins was the one who was able to take his game outside, but also play down low. I, I confused the two of their names, but, but, but that's who I was talking but about. But you're spot on, right? It's that in-between player that dominates the high school level. And I think kudos to Jake Thomas for stretching the floor, learning how to play. He's a great job hedging that screen on Andrew Pride. The Oceanside packing that man-to-man. -man. We saw a little through two at the end of each quarter in the first half. I mean, if, if anything says you know, look, Oceanside's working defensively with uh -oh. that play right there. Uh -oh. Stick going to throw it down. Oh, no, he missed it. He missed the dunk. You yeah, know, places on the edge of their seats is a nice up and under. How about the fine? Two sweet assists from Drew Sweet. And Jake Thomas has now got 11 at the game high, but I mean, I was, held, I was holding their breath. The whole place was getting ready for that sticky dunk. Yeah, I, you know, and look, there's no question that Bishop England has struggled shooting the ball a bit tonight but so much of this has to do with Oceanside's defense. Their defense has just been really good. It's truly suffocating as you see they've done a great job trapping down in the corner. It's back-to-back -back possessions with the steal for Oceanside. Thomas, big and heavy, he finds Carson Jones in the corner. How about a 12-0 run to start the second half? Clinical for Quentin Hollis' group. Brian Grevy seems to be letting them play. I, I thought he might take a timeout just to kind of settle things down here. He's not. But, you know, these are not, you, you you might see them on TV as like telegraph passes by Bishop England, but that's not a tele, that's just, he was stuck and had nowhere to go with that ball. The trap, the suffocating defense is exactly what caused that to happen. And there is the timeout. Well, we're gonna take the 12-0 run promotion side to our first media timeout of the second half. 37-11, our region championship on the line, only 13 minutes in the way for the Land Sharks.
welcome you back in. Two quick timeouts from Brian Greavy's group as they look to slow down. A 12-0 run from Oceanside to start the half. It's 37-11, five minutes to go. They smell blood in the water. The best of England desperately needs a three. They turn to Aiden Alexander. He's been their source of offense, lead the way with nine, but he misses everything. Yeah, and now Oceanside's level has just ratcheted it up. I mean, defensively especially, but they've just ratcheted up. They've hit a couple shots right off the rip. They you know, missed a couple early. So, I mean, it has been the dominating performance, but you can just tell when they ratchet up that intensity. There's not many teams in the 2A level in this state, aside from Great Collegiate, who beat them in the state championship last year, that are going to be able to stop this team. I mean, there's no question. 2A schools are relatively small in this state. They're going to have a lot of trouble with Oceanside, which is exactly what happened last year. And then you go up against Great Collegiate, and it is a battle. Those two teams do not like each other. Sister schools, Columbia, Charleston, and it gets intense when those two teams and, play. And Gray's dominated this classification in yep. the last five years. They've run truly a powerhouse. And I want to make something very clear, too, Scott. You talked about the first half. Yes, Bishop England struggled tonight, but it really is more of a testament to this Oceanside team. Bishop England's beaten the likes of Wanda, North Charleston, Pinewood Prep, the reason they're 16 and 7 going into this game. It was a really talented bunch. But this Oceanside team is on a quest to get back to Columbia. Yeah, well, now it's going to Florence. No more Columbia. They're moving no, it to the Florence. Civic Center. Yeah, the Florence Civic Center. Yeah, they, they've moved it from Aiken to Florence now. So uh, an interesting building. It's a really tough shooter's building. I tell you, I mean, it's almost impossible to shoot yeah, in that building. That's the number one thing everyone says about the Florence Civic Center. Well, the number one thing is, man, their internet stinks. Their Wi-Fi <laughs> stinks. But the second thing is, man, it's a really tough building to shoot. You rarely see knockdown shootout performances at the Florence Civic Center. It's really tough to shoot in there. And the hockey arena is Eric Dawson turns it over to Vandermeer. Vander misses the first attempt. He's got an offensive rebound chance. A beautiful pass to Aiden Alexander. How about the athleticism right now for Vander? Ooh! Van Dierby really is earning his stripes here. He's the kind of guy, he is working his butt off. You're not going to see his name tonight much in the scoring column, but he is working his butt up to, to, to help other guys and add the stats for them. Not that they're padding him that much, he only have 14 points tonight, but he's helping his other guys. He's being a facilitator tonight. Great backdoor cut right now. I'm telling you, Oceanside moves the ball so beautifully. But to your point, three offensive rebounds for Van Dierby on one possession. He's a three-year starter at that level. He's going to play college basketball. This is a beautiful play. The heads up. Naden Alexander's up to 12. That's a game off. Yep. And Bishop England has three guys playing college basketball right now. And Brian Greavy's so proud of them. One that he really is proud of is a guy who's also playing small college ball where you might see Van Dierby playing. Emery and Henry's point guard is... Patrick Antonelli, and uh, you know the name Antonelli when you talk basketball in Mount Pleasant. Debbie's son, and I'll tell you what, you want to talk about a guy who has worked for every little thing that he's got. Mr. Antonelli has done that to a T. What a job he's done. Uh, just a leader of that Emory and Henry team. I know he's injured this year, but he's had a great career so far, so he's still playing. And then, like we talked about, Aiden Alexander's brother down at the Citadel. And then the third one is Aiden McCool, who's still playing for Louisville. Uh, you know, he's uh, sitting at the end of the bench for Louisville, but a scout team player, a role-type player. And he's a guy who played for Maryland, kind of had to find a new spot when Mark Turgeon was run out of Maryland, and he's ended up at Louisville and is super happy at school. So, I mean, they've got a guy playing in the ACC right now from Bishop England. Two power five since from McCool, and, and I wanted to go back to Antonelli as well. It was honored to be on the broadcast. Bailey College, Emory and Henry unable to play. Patrick Antonelli's got another season under his belt to play. But he's going to have another 50 as a head coach somewhere. A brilliant basketball mind. From well, Dove. it makes total sense when Debbie's your mom. I mean, uh, there's there's so much basketball knowledge and respect of their basketball knowledge in the country for Debbie Antonelli and just just a tremendous asset to the Mount Pleasant community. What she does with the 24 hours, nothing but net for Special Olympics and honoring Frankie and and just an incredible asset to our community and I, I was actually talking the other day just about the schedule that she keeps and doing games literally across the country and Debbie Antonelli 
even on her nights off, is sitting there scouting Citadel or College of Charleston games just in case she has them later on in the year. She's there watching these games, and I'm going, Debbie, take a night off, but <laughs> just absolutely loves basketball. Jim Rat is Oceanside's clearly got a couple Jim Rats of their own. It was a 25-11 first half. Defense has been sucking, uh, suffocating, and I'm telling you, the second half may have been even prettier. Aiden Alexander actually leads the way, as you saw another great floater. He's up to 14, but it's been the bigs of Oceanside that yep. have really been the difference. Maker. Bigs who can take their game outside a little bit. Jake Thomas really has just impressed me tonight. He's the guy who I've looked at and said, Man, he's really got the potential to play at the next level, and we have not seen uh, the best of him yet. He's got plenty of years ahead of him. It's fun when you watch guys who really progress within a system and see where they end up. And, and you know, these Oceanside players, you know, winning is, is almost like it's the standard here. And so if you're not making it to a state championship, you're not as good as the other teams at this school. I mean, this is a brand new school and they got banners hanging all over this gym, everywhere. So they know baseball can do it. They know football does it. You know, they feel like, all right, we're the next team that's got to win a state championship. They've been there now, but they've got to win one. Oh, great head fake from Ellis Rollins. One dribble, pull up, bang. Ellis Rollins' his first two points of the night. Great head fake. Knock it down, cut the deficit back to 21. Caden Freeman, hand on the rock. It's his pocket pick by Vandy Irvy. Caden Freeman, you saw a really nice floater on the other end. Always fun to see the senior on senior night get a bucket. And we see a new big man in for Bishop England. That is Drew Gallagher who's in the game right now for Brian Grevy, kind of giving a spell to some of the other guys to take a little bit of a, a breath. So a new face we're seeing on the court for the Bishop England battling Bishops. And Van de Irvy was running down court, hand up. He wanted that ball. He saw an open lane to the hoop. Oh, that three touched everything. But look at Van de Irvy. And that's a jump ball. That's a great play. Possession will remain with the Bishops. That deficit's still at 21, but Van Yerby, he's gonna play until the gym's lights go out. Look at him go sky up for this offensive board. Yep, and that's a great tie up right there. That's a, a given, that, that's an earned possession for the Bishop of England battling Bishops. And down 21 with only, you know, what, nine minutes to play, and they are not mailing it in whatsoever. This is a team that really cares about being out here and. Uh, you know, they've got aspirations for this year. They've had a really good year under Brian, uh, under Brian Grevy. So, you know, we'll see what happens. You can, you can get momentum and you could learn things in a loss. You'd rather learn them from a win, but you can get things out of a loss. And you know, this is game tape that you could certainly use. At the top of the screen, he's guarded by Terrence Johnson. He gets in the chest a little bit too high. As Terrence Johnson, a 6'3", 200 pound sophomore. Who looks like he could play middle linebacker in an SEC school tomorrow. Handling the one-on-one -on -one duties with Andy Irby. You know, Stahl High School has had a lot of athletes who have taken their talents elsewhere and have done really, really well. You, you know, sometimes you go, man, I wish they'd see what Stahl could, you wonder what Stahl could do if they had a lot of the guys. One of their guys just played, you know, was one of the final four, uh, you know, NFL teams playing. Baltimore Ravens starting offensive lineman John Simpson. He started his career at Stahl before transferring over uh, to Fort Dorchester. But there's been several guys who have taken their talents from Stahl. Uh, so it, it's, you know, you kind of wonder how, how could they be? But, you know, Stahl High School has got uh, an NBA guy an NCAA ACC head coach and a United States Senator. So they've done pretty good about putting out uh, talent in all areas. Talk about fighting for a loose ball. This is starting to get maybe a little testy. As clearly a region championship on the line despite what the scoreboard says. I, I think they might be buddies because Mormon was laughing at after. Yeah. He, he was kind of chuckling. But it doesn't look like Van de Irby is chuckling I, at all. He was not finding about. any humor Man, in that. I yeah. love this kid's game. Yeah. You fight for the loose ball, win the whistle regardless if they've blown it. Hasn't poured in the scoring efforts that we've seen earlier this year. But maybe can he use that moment to get him rolling? Another foul on Terrence Johnson, his second son, Vandy Irving, to the charity strike. Now, if we can get a shot, we I saw the, the three gentlemen you see there in the background. Uh, that, that is a heck of a coaching lineup right there that helped bring 
a state championship to the Oceanside Land Sharks. There on your left on the screen, that is John Patterson, former James Island head coach, uh, Citadel assistant coach. He's been everywhere in football. He's also literally a world-class <laughs> bodybuilder. I mean, I just Google him, and that, that gentleman has not seen the inside of a gym that he doesn't like. Uh, an incredible, I think he has like 3% body fat. It's unbelievable. In the middle, that is Chad Wilkes, the head coach of the Oceanside Land Sharks, leading them to their first ever state championship this year. And then the guy to his left and your right, that is Brent LaPrade. He is the son of legendary Fort Dorchester head coach Steve LaPrade and came over here and did a heck of a job coordinating uh, for Chad Wilkes and leading this team to a state championship. So a lot of football knowledge with that three sitting there watching basketball tonight. Stickney's his jumper. He's up to nine as the lead back to 21. Stickney with 25 to go, a little transition. Dumps it off to Dawson into the corner for Terrence Johnson. Unable to get it to go. Fighting for a loose ball, but those three, a keen eye on the big fella, number 21. You talked about some NFL pedigree dudes. They think that he's got that kind of athleticism. Which is key, because this is the kind of place that can hone that athleticism and you know get it to where it needs to be for that next level. And I'll tell you, college coaches are here every day. They, they know that Oceanside is putting out athletes in all sorts of sports. Shot clock down to two. Does Dawson have a chance to float piece? Won't get it to go. Oceanside picks up right where they left off at the end of the first half. 41-20. Yep, they're just eight minutes away from a region championship. But hey, Vandy Irvy and the Bishop are going to keep on battling. It's in the main. Don't go anywhere. It'll be great. Right back after this break. Welcome you back into the Shark Tank. It's Will Lou Gray, Opportunity School Hoops, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. How about the big fella? Could he potentially be donning that Holy City heating and air player of the game trophy? Jake Thomas has been nothing but spectacular 11 and 4 so far in this one. As he and the Land Sharks are looking to put the final nail in the coffin as Abe Davenroy shelf your feet, lose your seat, a turnover to start that quarter. The Sharks. It's a very scientific process for picking the player of the game. <laughs> yeah. You have to hypothesize. You got to come up with statistics, deep, deep dives. Go to the big guy. Yeah. <laughs> Go to the big guy. Feels fairly simple. Yeah, we've got uh, some, some big guys coming up next week. Looking forward to the game next week. Esquiza Pleza with some Division One talent. And while we're talking about big guys, I think the big guy we're going to see next week is the best one in the low country. Cooper Kowalski is his name, and he is fun to watch. He's a really, really good player. Plenty of offers, I think Citadel, Navy, several uh, you know Division One offers already, and, and he is just kind of instant highlights when you see him play. 
We're going to have a fun one. First Baptist Porter Gowd, Robert Moore at Porter Gowd. He's going to have something to say to you, Scotty, about best big in the low countries. Vandy Irvy throws it off of the lower half. I think Robert Moore scored 40 in a game this year. He's, he's been pretty dominant. Ooh. So College of Charleston in on him. Coastal Con at State as well. Yeah, I saw, uh, saw Pat Kelsey at one of their games watching him. So if you're bringing out the head coach already, then uh, uh, granted it is convenient, but still. Game on. Yep. I think Pat Kelsey kind of has the resources to go where he wants to recruit, and, and you know, his time is precious. Nice on ball screen from Drew Gallagher, just a young sophomore. They beat him down low. Great corner kick. And they got him. There he is, Jack Vanderby. Corner three, cuts it back to 18, under 20. Mr. Sparky three, America's on time electrician. It's too little, too late for the Bishops as all of a sudden they're showing a little light. I think it is, but you still want to get all the momentum you can from the game and you know show your best stuff. There's no question that Oceanside has kind of outclassed Bishop England a bit on the court tonight. Just talent-wise, maybe a little bit size-wise, but you know, Bishop England's still a solid team. And, you know, I, I consider it a successful year. You grab a win or two in the playoffs and you're Bishop England. That's a really successful year. Now, year in, year out, their women's team is playing for state championships, and that's just Paul Rooney and, and how dominant they've been over the years. But, you know, this is a team that could cause some uh, some teams a, a headache in the playoffs. Uh, question is, they find Ellis Rollins. It looked like he had a continuation three the old-fashioned way, looking for one from behind the arc. Won't get it to fall. But Abe Davenport, he's looking for his first. There's the big fella. Jake Thomas back in action. How about three steals and three straight possessions for the Bishops? Uh, a little and miscommunication there's. there, and uh, <laughs> Vandy Irvy didn't know that one was coming at him. Ronnie Fazio was looking for Vandy Irvy to flash to the corner. Vandy Irvy was looking towards the paint. Commend the defensive effort here in this fourth quarter as they've ramped up the intensity. All starters on the floor. Ocean side as they're looking for Thomas. One dribble, tough take, great defense from Drew Gallagher. And I do like how Brian Grevy really is just not, he's not a yeller, he's not getting up and screaming at his guys. He's very analytical in how he coaches, he speaks to them, he doesn't yell at them. And I appreciate that about both of these coaches. I mean, they're both pretty calm, cool, and collected coaches. And I think kids react to that, they want to play for that. Ian Alexander with a great German move. Vandy Irvy, oh, the acrobatic finish. Show the right, finish the left. Two West Shore home points in the paint. Is Quentin Hollis a really animated timeout with 5:01 to go in the fourth? Watch the finish from Vandy Irvy. Yeah, that was a nice play. And I've seen crazier things in my life than a 16-point comeback. You know, it would be. Crazy, but it wouldn't be the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. Show the right, finish the left. Great finish from Van Yervy. And let's say, let's call it a 23 point deficit. They got it back to 16. Yeah. At 501 now. Quinn Hollis was furious. I'm not sure what he saw. I think he saw maybe a hole before Van Yervy was able to corral that 50 50 ball. But maybe he senses it senior night. Maybe not going to go away as easily as he would hope. He's getting his money's worth, though. Yeah, he's going to get his money's worth, and the ref is not having any part of it. But uh, it, it's it's one of those interesting, you know, he's not stopping coaching by any stretch. You know, they, they probably got this game in hand, but he's just as intense as he was on day one, uh, minute one, I should say, of the first quarter. Bishop England out on the court. They're, they want to keep this momentum, this juice rolling. You know, that's... That's this is the best yeah. run that they've had so far tonight. Say it's so 7-0 run in the last minute 40 of play. Yep. It's Ellis Rollins, Ronnie Fazio, Aiden Alexander, Jack Van Yervy, and a young sophomore, Drew Gallagher, on the floor for Bishop England. Riesco, Stickney, Davenroy, Thomas, and Jones on the floor for Oceanside. And the deficit to 16, 501 to play. We told you it's in the name, the battling bishops. They're not gonna go anywhere. Not under the watch of Brian Grevy. And then the guy sitting next to him has a very familiar name. That is David Rooney. He is the nephew of Paul Rooney. He has been with Grevy 13 out of the 14 years that he has been at Bishop England. He has been right by his side. Just a loyal, loyal assistant coach. Oh, look at Drew Gallagher on the floor. He did a great job boxing out on one end. Just can't get it to go. 
great floater pass from Ellis Rollins as he tries for the cross-court steal. Here comes the big fella. He said, get out of my way. Give me the ball. Let's roll. He's going to get fouled. It looked like he had been on the floor. What do I know? No, Thomas I think to the line. Yeah, he's going to the line. So, yeah, I mean, Thomas, though, when he decides to put his head down like a bull and charge, you know, most guys are getting out of the way. I give Andrew Pride all sorts of credit <laughs> earlier for not doing that, but, uh, you know, not something I'd want to stand in front of. That first free throw brought to you by Rapid Repairs. If your home needs repairs, call Rapid Repairs. There it is, said Brian Greedy and David Rooney. We told you it was a family affair. Donning the green is an honor. There have been a lot of, lot of special people to don that, uh, you know, that it's green. Kelly green? It's, I think it's Kelly Green. That would be it. And, uh, you know, they, this is a place that you'd have had, you know, I think, three first round picks in the major league draft. You got Drew Meyer. You got uh, Reese Havens was a first round pick. Uh, John Cornley played there, who cracked the big leagues. Drew Gilbert was a. Uh, or Jeff Gilbert, excuse me. Jeffrey, Jeffrey Gilbert. Gilbert. Yeah, Jeffrey Drew Gilbert. Gilbert's a Tennessee guy. Yeah, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Gilbert. Jeffrey Gilbert was a, a what? Second third round. He think he can't get the floor to go. There's the big fella, Jake Thomas, to the line. Jeffrey Gilbert still playing uh, for the Yankees in their organization. He'd like to be up in double-A this year, so we'll see what happens. But he was just back and had his camp over at Bishop England. So those guys, uh, they, they certainly don't go far. Uh, Drew Meyer was, what a player he was. What a player. 354, some studs on the hardwood tonight. 17-point lead, don't go anywhere. You know that I'm going to rise above, I'm showing It's Will Lou Gray's Opportunity School Hoops, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. It's a 17-point lead with 3.54 to go, but Quentin Hollis and his squad, he didn't feel like a 17-point lead in that animated timeout. Oh, no, it feels like this has been a Bishop England half as they've won the half, 8-2 to two here in this fourth quarter. Jake Thomas to the line for some rapid repairs, free throw. 3.54 to go, as I mentioned. Jack Longshaw alongside Scott Eisberg as Thomas rims in and out the first one. Be, yeah, go ahead. No, sorry, I was going to say, free throw so clutch, so important in any game, and as, as little as it seems, like, just ask the Citadel the other night. You know, they hit two free throws. That's not a question about Furman hitting a shot at the buzzer to tie the game. You know, uh, it's amazing the difference that can be made. Just the guys who stick in the gym and shoot free throws over and over and over again. What an advantage they have, and it's just it's such an important skill. If you could be a 85% free throw shooter, oh, just a, a huge asset to have on the team. Just up the road at Charleston Southern, RJ Johnson, their stud point guard is Vandy Irby. Nice up and under. He's having one heck of a second half. He's up to eight. All eight in the second half. But RJ Johnson, sixth in the country at 91% free throw shooter. Wow, yeah, that's a, it's that's an a asset, tremendous right? thing. And then tell you what, that Charleston Southern team, they're playing San Emily into having a job. Uh, he is uh, beloved by the players, the alum, 
they're behind them. And that's a heck of a win they pulled off at Radford the other day. Andy Irvie having himself a second half. He's one of the coast to coast. He's got Aiden Alexander. Better hands from Travis Stickney to slow down the transition run. Alexander, who's got a team high and game high, actually, with 14. Van Eerby with eight, which is a second half high. And it's been the disparity in scoring as Rollins is a little wide, rebounded by the senior, Caden Freeman. The thing that's most impressive about Van Eerby is just how patient he was. You know, he didn't press to get those points. He waited, he waited, and now granted, he didn't have a great night shooting early, but it came, it finally came, and he's in a, he'll get near his average. I mean, that's the thing. He, he just didn't press, because when you press and you start playing stupidly, then the turnovers happen and it just gets ugly. He didn't do that. He, he stayed within himself. He played his game. That's exactly what a quick Hollis defense is asking. They played into the game right. prep. They just didn't knock down shots early. It's why they find what might be an insurmountable lead. But Aiden Alexander's played one heck of a contest as Mandy Irving's going to be fouled yet again. It looks like they're going to get this one on the big fella, Max Mormon. It will send Vandy over to the line as I just spoke. That one's going to be on Caden Freeman, the senior, his first. Deficit to 16, 2.15 to go. Vandy Irvy wide left. It appears the Bishops have run out of time. He's got to look into the eyes of that shark and the teeth right behind. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's not an easy thing to shoot free throws into. Van Irvy's got nine, but you're right. The tank has grown year in and year out. <laughs> yeah. Quinn Hollis Hello. talked about it. Oh, you're ready. I, I, I saw thought, it. I, I was ready. I was just trying to protect our TVs. That's high money, high dollar things. <laughs> there you go. It's, looks like Oceanside's going to get a timeout before they're trapped in the corner by Van Irvy and Rollins. First out on the floor is Leo Albano, an assistant coach, the Notre Dame grad. Looks like he wants to check himself in a little bit, doesn't he? Oh, he does. He can still play. I'll tell you what, Leo Albano, we did a story with him when Notre Dame played Clemson in the Cotton Bowl, and you had every station and newspaper reporter from Charleston running to Leo Albano, who could have been the last guy on the scout team, and you had starters sitting there going, why are 18 people interviewing Leo Albano, who hasn't seen the field? But he was great. He took it like a champ. I think he got quite a bit of ribbing from uh, some of those senior starters when he's a freshman scout team guy. But uh, it was really cool to see Leo Albano in his, his final game. You talk about a Rudy moment. It was a Rudy moment. He got in. He got one carry for Notre Dame National TV. Mike Tarico was calling the game. Mike Tarico said from Bishop England High School in Charleston, South Carolina, Leo Albano. I remember recording it and going, that that is something that he is going to cherish for a long time. He got a run for Notre Dame, and, you know, Mike Tarico said his name. How cool is that? Storybook is you saw him on the far left of your screen holding the clipboard. Maybe one of the best athletes yeah. out of Charleston yeah. quite some time. And, and, and he was the Sports 4 Scholar Athlete of the Year. He got the scholarship to... Uh, to go from David Ayler, our old uh, you know sponsor for the Scholar Athlete, Leo Albano got it. Well, the dude with the rock right now is making a case that he should be the Scholar Athlete. Trying to stick me with that 4-3 GPA, he's had an incredible night. A little bit of a quiet night to his standards, but testament to a true point guard is stickney has got nine and four. Here's Van Dieri, the steal, the floater. He's going to rebound his own. Put back Moses Malone S. Starting the stat. Stuff quite a bit. He's into double figures. He's got 11. You could be the first person to ever compare Jack Van Dier like to that? Moses Malone, you like but you know, guy? I like it. Sneak it in there. Maybe he <laughs> it you know, purposes. I mean, there you are several. The there are several just... players that I, I probably would have, uh, you know, compared him to before Moses Malone. But you do you. No one did the put back <laughs> for no reason better, baby. Stickney guarded by Fazio. The runner, too easy. Stick me into double figures with 11 now. This could end up exactly like the first time they played. Obviously lower scoring, but you know, that was an 18-point uh, yeah, spread. Now what do we got? 15, so. Every bucket matters as Van Dierby goes down. They'll wrestle for the loose ball. I'm not sure what the Bally's book had on this game, but. <laughs> I gotta tell you. There's got to be a I'll hotline if you gambled on a high school basketball game with us on the call. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll go ask the guys down on the corner, down near Costco <laughs> yeah. in the Greek Mediterranean place, what the line on Oceanside Bishop England was. 
gotta be a sicko out there. <laughs> there's, there's somebody. I, you know, I haven't seen it, but there is a website. There's there's some guy who runs a website that that does put lines on every high school game in the state. I don't know who bets on him, but there's some guy who does put lines on high school games. Unneeded. 45-30, <laughs> 41 to go. There's the big fella. Holy City hitting the air. We provide solutions for every season. Jake Thomas, both ends of the floor, a menace to society. He finishes with close to 12 and eight. Just a sophomore standing at six foot six. Holy City hitting an air. Remember this thing, Jake Thomas, he's going big places. You know, my other player of the game is not actually in this game or at this game, but it was the guy dancing during the girls game tonight. He could have been the other player of the night tonight. And we don't know who he is, but that gentleman had a fedora, and he had sunglasses, and he had moves. Pitbull-esque. Yes. Very suave, similar to Jake Thomas's game. We mentioned he played for the Upward Stars team. He's going to be a name that everyone on those recruiting services is going to have an eye on. One of the better sophomore front court players. The challenge calls twin tower-esque when he's got he and Mormon in the game. Two really physical forward players. As he's our Holy City hitting an air player of the game. 45-30, and Aiden Alexander, he made a case to be that guy for Bishop England. He's going to finish with 14 as he was unable to get that floater to go. And I think Oceanside's just going to dribble this one out as the clock ticks down. A region championship taken in stride for the Oceanside Land Sharks. Not a ton of celebrating. It's act like you've been there before because they have, and they've got much higher aspirations. A quiet offensive night for Q Hollis's group. His sixth season as the head coach here at Oceanside, well, it results in another region championship. They move to 17 and 6, 7 0 in region. Bishop England falls 16 and 8, 5 and 2 in region. 45 30, Cruz Chevrolet. Don't go anywhere. Tonight's trophy and scholar athlete plaque at the end of the season will be provided by All American Works. Scott Eisberg will be with Q Hollis and Lanchard after our final break. It's Will Lou Gray Opportunity School of Hoops driven by Cruz Chevrolet for the final time tonight. Oceanside 45 30, a dominating victory. Before we send down to Scott Eisner and Q Hollis, tonight's trophy and scholar athlete plaques at the end of the season are provided by All American Awards, helping Charleston recognize excellence since 1993. A standard of excellence in his sixth season as the head coach here at Oceanside. We send it down to you, Scotty, as he's with Q House and the winning region champion, Oceanside Landsharks. Down to you, Scotty.
Jack, thank you very much. Joined now by Quinton Hollis, head coach of the Oceanside Land Sharks, 15-point winners, region champions again. How do you guys feel about the performance tonight on TV? First, I was going to give a shout-out to my mom and dad. I made them proud. But, uh, yeah, we feel we feel good uh, go back-to-back -back region championship, a hard fight game. Shout-out to Bishop England, gave a tough battle, but we fought hard today. Didn't have to dial up everybody, but we got enough to get the win today. I felt like you ratcheted it up big time the first couple minutes of the third quarter. How important was it to really take a nice lead and make it an insurmountable lead? It was great. Just had to give them a couple words of motivation back in the locker room, but uh, they came out and very play, played very, very hard, which was good to see. It almost was like they took it business like it you know there wasn't a celebration about the region title was it just that you expect more and that you've been there before yeah I think just the hard work we, we, we it's not that we expect to win but we work so hard we expect great outcomes so that's why we're we are excited don't get me wrong we're excited for this group it's this group's first region championship even though we went back to back so they're excited for this it's a goal of ours all summer awesome congratulations to the Oceanside Land Sharks Quinton Hollis their head coach <laughs> He hit us with the LeBron. Quentin Hollis just hit us with the LeBron. That might be a first. Anything is possible. Back to back, yet he made very clear this is the first for this Oceanside Land Shark squad. They lost a lot of pieces, yet the depth, it provided dividends. A defensive show out tonight, 45-30. Scotty, final thoughts. Final thoughts. Besides the real deal, they're a team that can make a lot of noise. I would not be surprised one bit to see them playing in the 2A state championship game up in Florence. I think they've got their best basketball ahead of them, and uh, they are as advertised. I think the Bishop England battling Bishops are a good team, and they'll make some noise later on, but Oceanside certainly the 2A class of the low country. They dominated tonight. Well, we've got another region championship next Friday night. It's going to be Porter Gowd, First Baptist. It's going to be an unbelievable matchup. And as we say goodbye tonight, we want to say thanks to all of our sponsors. Will Lou Gray Opportunity School, Crew Chevrolet, the Thumbs Up Guys, Doctor's Implant, Mr. Sparky, Rapid Repairs, Holy City Heating and Air, our player of the game, Jake Thomas, and finally West Shore Home. All those points in the paint, they were just too big, too strong that front court was in the paint tonight. Oceanside 45, Bishop England 30. Dominant from start to finish. Two legendary coaches in Brian Greavy and Quentin Hollis. Well, we say goodnight. The region championships, it dominated North Mount Pleasant. The Land Sharks win 45-30. That for myself, Scott Eisberg, I'm Jack DeLongshaw. We say thank you. We'll see you next week. Taking everything that I see and that's so to me, you know it. You know that I'm going to rise above, I'm showing you.